Hi, welcome to another of our DB2 PureScale demonstration videos. Today we'll be looking at how DB2 PureScale reacts to failure in a, in a member in the cluster. Today we're going to be talking about what happens when a member fails in the DB2 PureScale cluster. We'll start off with a brief introduction of the platform and then move on to what actually happens when a member fails and then run into our live demonstration with a summary on DB2 PureScale availability features and its ability to survive individual component failures. The platform we're going to use for this live demonstration is the IBM DB2 PureScale Nano Cluster. This is made up of two combined member and CF nodes running on small footprint. In our case, this is dual-core Atom processors. Uh, we'll be using one shared disk through GPFS and iSCSI, uh, which combines GPFS functionality with application server functionality. The DB2 Technology Explorer is used to provide monitoring for the environment, and the link shown here will take you to this. This is open source and available from SourceForge. And to see a little bit more detail on this platform, have a look at our CF failure demo video. So, what are we going to see in the live example? Well, in this particular case, we're going to use the KillM script, which is applied as part of the PureScale Nano cluster. This kills the DB2 SysC process on the member where it's issued. When the, uh, when the member dies, DB2 cluster services on the surviving members and CFs loses heartbeat with that particular member. This then informs the surviving members and CFs that the member has gone out. It then immediately fences the failed member from its active logs and, uh, and from the shared database image. Clients automatically reroute from the failed member to any surviving members to ensure that workload can continue to be delivered within the available capacity. If the home host is still available as far as cluster services are concerned, this then restarts the failed member on its home host. This uses fast crash recovery, which benefits from cache pages in the CF, or cache data pages within the CF, and its very first actions are to back out and roll forward as required to clear retained locks. As the member becomes fully available, the workload dynamically rebalances across all of the members so that full capacity is restored. So that's about 40 seconds from the point that the member was killed until full capacity is restored to the environment, which is a fairly impressive turnaround in time, especially when you consider the limitations of our platforms. This final foil shows a brief summary of how good PureScale is at surviving individual member, node, uh, member and CF node failures within the cluster, and whether this is transparent to the user workload that's coming through. 
If you enjoyed this demo video, please feel free to have a look at our website uh, where you'll find out a little bit more about what we're up to with PureScale at the moment, uh, or get in touch via email or telephone. Thanks very much for watching.